Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how to work with Gradle in your Java project. Gradle is quite a big topic, so I'll record three videos about it. After watching all of them, you will be able to answer on any technical interview question about Gradle and freely use this tool on a real project. Today, we will learn what is the Gradle, how does a project structure look like, its basic concepts, crucial files and basic configuration. What is the Gradle? It's a declarative project built automation tool. I want to repeat what I've said in a previous video about Maven, that build tools like Ant, Gradle and Maven make building process simpler. It automates everyday developer goals like code compilation, test running, dependency import and executable file creation. Declarative build tool means that developer just tell to this tool what he needs to do, and such build tool knows how to do it. It knows where to download dependencies, how to resolve dependency conflicts, where to put executable file, and many other things. And Gradle is used in such well-known projects as Spring and Hibernate. Also note that Gradle is a universal tool, which can be used not only with Java, but with other programming languages. Gradle is the most modern build tool, and I want to tell you about its benefits over Maven. First benefit is that Gradle from 2 to 10 times faster, according to the official documentation. In Gradle, builds are incremental, it means that Gradle only running what is necessary, it will not run tasks again if nothing changed in project files. It's scalable due to plugins. Gradle has configurable build steps, you can write own tasks and implement them to lifecycle. It's more iconic due to groovy language which is used by Gradle. Project lifecycle represents as a cyclic graph, which makes it easier to configure and understand. Also, I can single out one drawback, that Gradle gives too many possibilities to developer so project can become too complex. Let's go to the project. At first, let's take a look at Gradle files. The first file is a build.gradle. It's an equivalent of a pom.xml file from Maven. Build.gradle contains plugins, tasks, dependencies and configurations which are necessary for project build. Next is the settings.gradle. It's a file where you can define your project name and if it's a multi-module project, you can specify modules names itself. Uh, we will take a closer look at multi-module Gradle project in further video. Next is a Gradle and Gradle.bat scripts. It just scripts for running Gradle wrapper. wrapper. Gradle wrapper files itself are stored in Gradle wrapper folder it's a package with Gradle itself. It makes possible to run your project without installing Gradle on your machine. We will take a look at it a bit later. And next it's a build folder. It's an equivalent of target folder in Maven, which contains compiled classes, a archived file of projects such as Java, ER, reports about tests running, etc. As you can see, the project structure itself almost like in the Maven, SRC, made. Java. I want to draw your attention that Gradle allows you to change project catalog structure. For example, if you write this code in build.gradle file, let's refresh, source sets, main Java, src dears, src slash Java, you can see that now Gradle can find our main class application because we have different folder structure. Let's commit it again. And now you can see that the main file is found by Gradle. Now I want to tell you what is a Gradle wrapper. It's a kind of useful thing. As I've said previously, Gradle wrapper, it's a Gradle itself which is packed and located in your project sources at folder with name Gradle. And it allows you to run tasks on a machine where Gradle is not installed. Also, you can use special version of a Gradle wrapper. Let's imagine that we want to build some project on a new machine where installed on the Java runtime environment. Uh, with Gradle wrapper you could do it from the box. Just locate our terminal at folder where our project stores and instead of writing commands as Gradle build 
it won't work because Gradle is not installed, you can just change keyword Gradle to dot slash Gradle on Linux or Mac or Gradle dot bat on Windows to run any tasks you need. We will try to do it in the further videos when we will learn tasks. Let's take a closer look at main file for setting up your Gradle project configuration. It's a build.gradle file. The first block is plugins. By default, Gradle doesn't know on what programming language your project is written and how to work with it. So, for our purposes, we need to point out that we need Java plugin. Note that almost every plugin changes the default Gradle lifecycle. We can find the Gradle lifecycle, it means Gradle tasks, in a special Gradle toolbar on the right side of an IntelliJ IDEA. Here we see the standard tasks. Let's, let me show you that the plugin could change the lifecycle. Let me add a new plugin, org spring framework that boot version 2.5.2. And now we need to refresh Gradle. So we can see that some tasks added to our lifecycle, such as boot jar, boot jar main class name, and so on. The lifecycle from Java plugin is quite like the Maven lifecycle, but we can configure it by adding and removing tasks. In next video, I will show you how to do that. Today, we will concentrate only on basics. We can see declaration of group and version. Next, it's a Java version. By default, the Gradle builds and the project on the same JDK which is used by the Gradle itself. But sometimes we need to define specific Java version for the project. There are two ways to do it. The first way is a tool chain. Let me hide the, this toolbar. How it works. If Gradle found JDK with necessary version on the local machine, it will use this JDK. Otherwise, it will download open JDK with necessary version to Gradle home directory, which locates in Windows. On path C users, uh, name of the user, Gradle, JDKs. It's kinda useful, but it will take more memory. The second way to run your project on another Java version is a source compatibility. How it works? Gradle takes the JDK which is used by the Gradle itself and then run project in compatibility mode. It means that you can choose only lower Java version than the Gradle JDK. In other words, it's just take your JDK and run it and run project with it. Repositories. Unlike the Maven, the Gradle doesn't know from where it needs to take dependencies, because Gradle has no its own reposi uh, remote repository, like Maven repository. So you need to specify it. Of course, we can use the Maven re central repository itself. We can see it declaration here. Also, if we declare special alias Maven local, it means that Gradle will try to find dependencies in maven root folder. Note that Gradle starts searching dependencies uh, from top to bottom uh, how they declared in repositories block. So firstly it will try to find in maven local, next in maven central, next in other repositories. By this declaration uh, you can say to Gradle to look for the libraries from any other remote repositories such as Nexus or something else. And flat dir means that we'll try to find dependencies in local directory. Here is with the name libs. For example, if we will create in our project directory with name libs, it will try to find dependencies in there too. It can be useful for some project if you have some special dependencies. Next is the encoding. It means that our project will run in UDF8 encoding. Variables block. There are two ways of variables declaration. First is with dev keyword 
and second with ext keyword ext is a older variant but i must show it to you because you could meet it on a real project and i want you to know how does it look like this declaration is preferred because I, IntelliJ IDEA has better integration with it and you can easily navigate to code by uh, using the control button. As you can see, we navigate it to the variable itself. For using our variable in dependencies, you need to add double quotes and use dollar sign like here. And finally, let's take a short look at dependencies. Here we see the simplest way to add dependency to the project. Implementation scope means that this dependency will be available in compile and runtime stages and also in tests. We see different syntax to append dependency. Here we can see group, colon, uh, next the name, uh, and next is a version, uh, name of a model and next is version of a module. Another way to write a dependency is to specify separately group, name, and the version of the dependency. More about, more about scopes we will learn in next video. Don't bring your attention on this configuration block. It's just for fixing the login issue of the Spring Boot plugin. Thank you for watching this video. Today we've learned everything you need to start working with Gradle on your own. In next video, we will talk about dependencies and scopes in all details. We will take a closer look at tasks, how to create them, add to lifecycle and run them. If you like this video, hit the like button and make sure you don't subscribe button. Have an awesome day. I'll see you once again in the next one.